two things just to start. Uh, pup uh, players that will start out that way will be uh, Colton Dow. Obviously, he'd be on reserve pup to start, still coming off his ACL. Uh, and then uh, uh, MP, MPF will be on the active pup, which would be you know a couple of days uh, as we start. So uh, just to clarify for him, just so everybody's on the same page, uh, his injury is not his his pup is not related to his shoulder. His shoulder has been cleared; it's healed. Um, it's related to a cleanup. He had a cleanup surgery in the off season after the first couple of weeks uh, of of our program, and uh, had a little issue to to clean up. And, and really, that's what that is. And so he's just coming off of that. Should be good in a few days' time, but he'll he'll start officially on the uh, active pup. So other than that, uh, we are everyone else is cleared and healthy and ready to roll. So uh, we're in a pretty good place health wise. Uh, we'll have some guys that we manage over the course of training camp in terms of load and, um, you know, guys that are a little bit older and all that stuff. But other than that, we were healthy uh, going into camp, which is where you want to be, and I'm excited to get rolling. So uh, let it rip. Is that cleanup surgery shoulder surgery? No, no. Uh, I did not clarify. Sorry. It was a knee cleanup. Okay. Yep. And Stoney, I guess, no designation, just kind of monitor him throughout early? Yeah, no, desi no designation for, for Stonehouse. He's, he's felt really good in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I'm really confident in how he's punting. Um, so the next step for a guy like him and, and from that injury rehab wise is to you got to start getting back into it. it's a mental thing on top of it. So um, he felt good enough to participate and, and we uh, had a long conversation with him this morning and, and he's ready to roll. So um, he's going to take some some reps and start getting back into it. Uh, it's sort of the next phase, last phase of his rehab. So uh, excited about that. He looks good. Guys have signed Jamal Adams since the last time we got to talk to you. Why does mm -hmm. that fit make sense? Oh, you know, there's a lot of reasons, but um, the biggest one is that, that there's a mentality that, that Jamal brings when he plays. Um, he fits the system that, that Denar needs. We needed some, some pieces at safety. He's really versatile. Uh, he can do a lot of different things. Um, he's played some big nickel packages. He's played some dime linebacker. Uh, we'll explore those roles for him as, um, as camp gets going, but he's got a really versatile uh, ability to, to help the defense in a lot of different ways. Um, and then, you know, the mentality that he plays with is um, – is unique and it's fun and we need we need that on our defense as well so uh, excited to have him on board obviously we haven't got a chance to take a look at him yet uh, it'll be my first time uh, as a titan obviously i played against him for a couple of different times and, and he's a he's a real problem and uh, he's had battled some injuries as of late but excited to have him here how much of the new addition do you feel like there might be more ends coming uh you know I, I would say that we never really there's a lot of places you never really feel set um always looking to improve positions uh, if there's people out there that can help us and improve our team so uh, I would never declare that that we're set really just about anywhere um, so we'll see we'll see what that looks like in the next couple of weeks is Carl Lawson healthy healthy to your knowledge and is he somebody that could maybe help you I don't know if he is uh, to be honest um, you know I was with Carl in Cincinnati so uh, good player good rusher um, not sure where he's at at the moment Guys, obviously, that probably need as much work as they can get. Others that maybe don't need as much. How do you kind of structure that maybe in camp? Maybe? Yeah, uh, you know, I think the, the the thing is they all need the football work when the when the pads come on, and you only get so many padded practices. And so there's there's a time and a place for all the guys to need work. And I think that um, you know even guys like like Hop and Jeffrey have played a long time and been very successful players. They still need the work to get ready to play. Uh, you know, NFL football on Sundays in the regular season. So we'll balance that. I mean, there's definitely guys that, that'll have a little bit of uh, maybe a period off or some reps off or even a day off here and there um, as, as the camp goes along. But the way the schedules are nowadays and, and the way the camp is, it's, it's a lot different than it used to be. So, um, you know, you manage guys as they need it, but they also need the work too. What's the latest how much with does, how much I know I'll go, we'll, go, back. we'll go right. Oh, go ahead, Denise. Uh, what's the latest with Devondre Sweat? You know, I know coming back, yeah. conditioning and all that, how did he fare? He looks good. He looks ready to roll. Um, don't expect uh, any issues as we get started. He should be um, dressed and practicing and ready to play football. By adding Adams, a guy, a guy who has an aggressive approach to what you've already added in the offseason with Snead and, and Woozy, mm -hmm. uh, how much does that kind of transform just the mindset as well as the talent on the back? That's a big part of it. You know, it's just a different – It's he's a different type of player uh, and he brings an edge and attitude that, um, as you guys have all listened to Denard talk, that, that is important to him. And uh, he's got great experience with Denard as it is. Um, obviously, Denard's coached him for a number of years and um, – that mentality, the edge that they play with, that what he's looking for from our defensive backfield. Um, I think we got a bunch of guys that now fit that. 
you know, uh, between Cheeto and LJ, those are two really physical corners. Um, they'll come up and hit, they tackle. Uh, and now you, now you add a guy like Jamal in there with hook in the back end and, and Roger as the nickel. And, and you got a pretty good group of, of physical presence in the secondary. And that's what, that's what we're looking for. Expect to see maybe the first few days, especially out of, out of Will. Yeah, um, Will's in a really good place. I'm, I'm excited about what he's what he's going to play like. Uh, I'm excited to see it, but it's more just about playing on time. You know, is, is is getting that timing back, the accuracy, the timing, and decision making are sort of the three things that um, that you look for, especially early on, and, and try to get that developed as quickly as possible. Kind of get back into the flow, um, and so those would be what I'm looking for. And I, I think that. Having Will, the work that he put in, how he looks right now is, is exciting, and, and now it's we got to go do it. How pleased were you to hear that he took guys to Cabo and gathered guys at Vanderbilt? Yeah, and- it's great. I, I, you know, that's that's what your quarterback, you know, that should be doing. You should have a guy that's uh, going to take a leadership role with the team and and make sure that he's bringing guys with him, and, and that's a big part of leadership is is bringing people along with you. And um, I thought he's done a fantastic job of of setting the tone uh, for those guys on offense. Uh, and putting the necessary work in to have a chance to be successful and uh, being able to have a, a leadership presence that, you know, he probably this is the first time he's had since he was in college. So I'm um, excited about that. I think guys responded well to it. We spoke in the spring about how during uh, that portion of the offseason, he was kind of focused on working through some things, changing the way that he approaches different elements of his game, kind of like being in the lab a little bit. Does that mentality change once you get to August? Do you want to see – Uh, a significantly different approach to the way that he practices? Um, Significantly different, no, but it does change. I mean, that's an accurate uh, uh, observation is that, you know, now we're we're getting ready to go play, and and a lot more of it is about making sure that our offense and our, our, our team is ready to go play football. Um, And so there's a little bit less uh, of the, of the, experimenting and the tweaking and more about trying to really dial in and lock down um, the details and the expectations of, of the position and the job. And um, there's still some room for, you know, some experimentation and some, so, but by this point, by the time we, you know, we really get going, we need to be ready to play football. And it's less about those experimentations. Now that's not to say that there's, there's not work and technique and all those things over the course of an entire season, but um, the focus does change a little bit. Which lead do you need to find your answers on the right side of the offensive line to have that group gel cohesive? Um, you know, those those are going to be real. Those are real battles. I mean, those are real position battles, and, and they are open. Um, so it's going to go probably the length of, of training camp. You know, we'll probably declare at some point. Uh, they probably won't hear who's going to start there until – the opening game, to be honest, and and that's the fair way to do it because I think we got players that are capable, um, guys that are going to compete, and I think the competition raises um, the level of performance. And so, those will be open jobs. That's the competition. Um, who you see out there the first day may not be who you see there the second day, and they're going to rotate and, and have equal opportunity uh, to claim that job. And then obviously, once someone's play um, necessitates them getting more reps, then they'll get more reps. And uh, but that's that's going to be fun. I'm excited about that battle. I think those guys are up to the task, and um, you're going to see a lot of a lot of those guys playing throughout the course of camp and in the preseason. So, um, to answer the question directly about how quickly you'd like that to happen, I mean, sure, you'd love to have all five guys from the day one till till the end of training camp together, but um, that's just not the reality of it. And, and we got good players that I think are competing for those spots. And um, you know, if it if it takes till the week one, then it takes to week one. Talked earlier about about Will maybe bettering his kind of accuracy and mm-hmm. completion percentage. What what are some things that, that he can do and, and what are maybe some things the staff can do to help him in, in that regard? Yeah, for him uh, as a quarterback, uh, knowing where to go with the ball, know that the timing that it's required to, to be at the location um, are, are probably the two biggest things. Then you get down to the technique part, um, your footwork, uh, your recognition of the coverage, all that stuff starts to play in. But the biggest thing is knowing where to go with the ball uh, and knowing where to go at the timing that it's supposed to get there. And um, as far as coaching-wise, we can make that easy for him. You know, we can we can make the reads easy. We can make the, the system manageable, digestible. Um, and then hopefully he takes some mastery over that as well. And, and over time, he'll get there. Um, but I think that's the biggest thing is is just knowing what to do and where to go is, is kind of the first part. He's got the ability to throw accurately. His, his mechanics and all those things, um, he's an accurate thrower. Uh, a lot more of accuracy is about throwing it on time and knowing when to let the ball go, where the window is, 
uh, understanding location of defenders and where you're supposed to put the ball. So um, those are all things that we'll work on, you know, probably every day uh, for most of training camp. And uh, I think he's improved a tremendous amount over the course of the offseason as well. So, again, I'm excited to see, you know, what, what Will looks like as we get going. You were doing a more extensive pre-practice stretch mm -hmm. than we'd seen before. Is that something that continues now? Yeah. Uh, and how much does Zach feel like that gets you guys? The yeah, it's a, it's more of a dynamic uh, dynamic movement warm up than, than just like an old school stretch. Um, and a lot of that is is prepping the body for movement. And Zach's really well researched. He spends a lot of time um, thinking about those things, adapting when new information comes to light and new things come into the uh, warm up procedure. But I think our players really responded to it well and they liked it. They feel ready for practice. Um, and it's more about getting ready to go full speed and burst than it is just to, to, to stretch like we're all used to stretching, you know? So um, I feel like you probably see that around around the league a lot of places is there's more of a shift into this dynamic warm-up um, and movement-based warm-up as opposed to just the old school stretch lines. Do you have to sacrifice a little bit of time elsewhere to trade off for what uh, you have Haven't do? yet, haven't yet. I mean, we'll, we'll, as we start getting some of these longer practices in training camp, um, you know, we'll see. It'd be my first time doing it like that. but. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, there's enough to hours in the day and in, in, in the rules of the CBA that um, I don't think we'll have any issues. But yeah, it takes it's a little bit longer than your traditional beginning of practice for sure. As you put things together, how do you approach just like veteran days off and management for guys, especially yeah. someone like Snead? Yeah, we track um, some of it's in, you know injury related or coming or coming off of injuries. That's a training staff. Um, that's Todd and his crew kind of advising on when those guys might need to be pulled back. Um, we also manage loads off of the GPS um, and a strength staff, so they manage all that in the sports science part on on how many yards are running, how many full speed yards, what the accelerations and decelerations are. Um, those things all get factored in. Sometimes a guy will come, uh, you'll you'll end up in you know maybe the third period of practice, and and he'll have sort of redlined, if you will, on some of that GPS stuff. And uh, Zach will come over and say, hey, he's, he's done for the day. And then we shut him down. So um, there's a science part of it that's tracked. There's an injury part of it from the training room. Um, and then sometimes it's just a good old fashioned uh, guy needs a break, you know. Um, but for the most part, we try to base as much as we can off of whatever data we've received and, and what our training staff sees in the rehab processes. Is there a separate approach for need given some of the the yes. ways he's been managed in the past. Yeah, he'll be managed differently um, just because that's how he's, you know, he managed to play almost every snap last year, you know. And so that's ultimately that's the goal is, is be healthy and available on Sundays. And so uh, to get him to that point, you know, we have a program in place for him um, that's, that we've consulted with him on and, and our trainers and doctors. And so uh, we should be all good there. Changing the, the kickoff. That, Go ahead. Second, the players that have injuries or are mm. working through something, the team as a whole, when it comes to managing that ramp up period, the physicality over the mm. next couple of weeks, how do you manage that line leading up into putting on the pads and then also joint practices down the line? Yeah, the the way the CBA is spelled out now, you know, we're under a, I think it's an eight day acclimation period, uh, which really ultimately just, it's just, it just, it forces us to keep the process in a slow build. So the first day we, is today. We can't do any football. It's more of just a move or movement, conditioning, whatever that is. The second day, it's you get 75 minutes. The third day, you get 90, and then you get 90, and then you have to have a day off every seven days. And so there, it, it sort of spells itself out. And then once that first day off hits, we'll be in our in our kind of our ramp period in the, in the full pads uh, in our normal cadence throughout training camp. So you get into training camp based on the rules and it's already there. It's almost like OTAs for a couple of days. There's no helmets and we're in shorts and all that. So um, it's pretty easy to follow those rules and the players, it's been negotiated, so we have to. Um, but that kind of manages itself. And then when you get into camp, there's there's a part of like, you have to do hard things still. Like at practice, you have to be in pads. It has to be hard. Uh, it's gotta be hot. You want all those things to happen. And that's part of building up um, your toughness and your resilience as a football team. And so um, that'll happen as, as, as we get into the pads. Uh, the joint practices uh, are really fun. I love joint practices, and uh, it's it's a good test because now you got guys going a little bit harder. You know, you're not trying to say take care of each other the same way that you do with your own team, um, and it's a little bit more competitive. And those it's controlled still though, so you get all the benefits of competition uh, without you know the the game day where it's it's live and all the bullets are flying and those guys are at risk of injury. It's a little bit more controlled than that. So um, really excited to have those guys come out here and practice. It'll be fun. With the, change, with the rule change that's coming up and getting to implement that now in the kickoff, 
Does it change at all the type of athletes that you put on kickoff return and kickoff cover rather than just having like a, a bunch of guys who can run 50 yards and mm-hmm. hit somebody head on? I, I think it is going to change um, a little bit. I don't know for sure uh, until we see a little more actual contact and li- like the preseason games. I mean, obviously no one's going to show sch- scheme, but you're going to get a feel for what it looks like. And my guess would be, yeah, there's going to be some changes in the body types uh, across the league. I think it'll be interesting to follow um, the types of players that are going to be able to be effective in those roles because it does. It's very different, very, very different than anything we've seen before. So um, it makes me nervous, and I'm also excited to see what it looks like. Framework in mind in terms of starters and how much you want them in this game, that game. Yeah, those yeah. Could, those conversations we've kind of started between uh, between uh, Ran and I, and and working working through what that's going to look like. Um, I hesitate to say anything now because it could change. I don't want to pin myself down to one thing, but I, I do. You know, our, our our team needs to play together. Um, they need to play football together. We need to operate on offense and to operate on defense. Um, we got a lot of new faces and new people here. So that's an important part uh, of the preseason to me. So our starters will play. Um, they'll play enough uh, is, is probably the best way to put it. Um, and then just ph- philosophically, when we practice against the Seahawks for two days, they'll probably play less in that game because they'll get a bunch of heavy work for two days uh, against them anyway in practice. But um, I do see our, our starters will probably play in all three games, and um, we'll see you know what that looks like lengthwise. But um, we need to play together and operate together and uh, play some football before we get started. View the opportunity for snaps in the tight end room, especially with the three of Chig, Wiley, and Vanette. Yeah, it's uh, it's a room I'm excited about. Um, I've, I've really been impressed with Josh and Chig. Uh, having Nick as a veteran presence, the guy that's done it for a long time, has been great. Um, it's going to be, they're all going to get plenty of opportunities. I mean, we it's not a room that um, is going to be dominated by one guy. Those guys are all going to help us. Uh, they are going to have roles, um, and it allows us to be a little bit more multiple in a personnel grouping. So we can use all three of them. We can use two of them. We can use one of them. Um, and they all have different skill sets. So it's sort of a um, we're going to fill the, the tight end role with a lot of different players as opposed to maybe just one or two guys like um, some teams do. But uh, they're also young, too, then they're emerging. And so I'm, I'm excited to see what Josh does in training camp, how Chig comes along. Um, so it's going to be – it's a fun group. I'm excited about them. they got great energy, and uh, I think that they got a chance to really help our offense. You talk about Mason and Malik competing. How, how does, how does, what's that look like maybe from a rep standpoint, how you handle them? Throughout? Yeah, it'll be – it'll still be pretty split evenly. Um, you know, obviously at some point, just like all position battles, you do have to, to make a decision. Um, and a lot of that's going to be how they play. You know, they're going to get ch- opportunities to play in games, and uh, that goes a long way in the evaluation process. But uh, also just the performance and practice every day, the consistency. Um, they'll all, both, both have equal opportunity to, to establish themselves as, as the backup quarterback, and um, I'm looking forward to that competition. From the coach's standpoint, the coach's standpoint, is it a little bit more unique yeah. um, in the running back's room just with two similar backs in terms mm-hmm. of – Deciding who will be the starter with Tajay and Tony. Yeah, I don't. That those two doesn't. I don't really look at them as as one starting over the other. Truthfully, um, I, I think they both have really unique skills um, that we're going to find a way to use in a lot of different ways. Uh, then that's the fun part uh, for me right now is is how are we going to deploy those guys and uh, maybe they both play at the same time. Maybe one's. One gets hot and we let them run. Maybe one gets, you know, maybe we just rotate back and forth. I don't know what that's going to look like yet. Um, but they're both going to play uh, quite a bit of football for us. And, and I don't view either one of them as a as a starter or a backup. They're both starting starting players to me. Um, and then the rest of the running back room is going to be fun to, to see how that shakes out. I mean, we still need guys to contribute on special teams in the running back room. And we need a third back to step up. And uh, there's there's some competition there kind of underneath the surface um, for that that third back. A little bit of a picture. Just what is your barometer for success in year one? What are some specific goals you have for this team that you think you need to get? Yeah, you know, I, I, I try not to look too far ahead. Um, but I would, I would like to see an efficient offense, an offense that looks like we know what we're doing. Um, the style of defense, you want guys to play within the scheme. Uh, you want to see the competitive nature, the, the attitude that we're looking for, the soundness of the scheme. Um, you know, I, I think that, that we're going to be a really competitive football team. And to put a number on wins or losses or expectations, I think a lot of it still remains to be seen. You know, we have a lot of work to do to get to that point. And um, I'm excited about the work and the process to get there. And, 
you know, I just, I want to see us get better every day at the, at ultimately. And it's, it's a cliche and it's a coach speak answer. I understand that, but it's, that's the truth really. I mean, I, I haven't gone much past, you know, my meetings this afternoon I have to get ready for. So, um, I'll let you guys determine what success looks like. Or as close as you thought you'd be to where you want to be when you took the job nine months ago. I do. I feel really good about where our team is at. Uh, I feel good about the players we've drafted. I feel good about the players we added in free agency. Um, I feel good about the guys that we have have here in the locker room before before I got here. Um, so I think the team's in a good place. Uh, I love the way they work. I love their attitude. Um, and so we're, we're going to see what we're all about. And the best part about it is, is you know, we get to put pads on and, and go play football and, uh, and get to show people whether we're up to the task or not. And I, and I think that our guys are, and I'm excited to see that. Late signing for you guys, Jaron Christian. Um, What's that one more time? It's another late signing for you guys. It's Jaron Christian. I yep. think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, what did you guys like about him? And, and is there any chance he gets a shot at right tackle? I know he's been more left than the. No, oh, yeah, those guys. You know, the guys that we've added are, are all going to have opportunities. Um, you know, we've added some some veteran tackles, uh, guys that my dad's got some experience with as well. So that's always a, a plus. Um, but but guys that have played, you know, I think that helps. They help get, that have been in the fire and know what it looks like, um, and and have played football. So uh, y'all, you're gonna <laughs> you need every lineman usually. Uh, unfortunately, that's just kind of how the life is in the NFL. Is that you're gonna have injuries, you're gonna have guys that have to step up and play. And so um, we're trying to get as many of those guys that can that can help us as as we can. Right at all, or is he more? <laughs> Strictly left or I'll say this, the, the, the best tackle that we have will play on the right. And um, whatever that looks like, if you're not starting right tackle, they got to still be able to play both. Um, so if you're the swing or you're, the, you're, the, you're one of those backup tackles, they're going to play on both sides. So uh, I wouldn't pin any of those guys down to one side at this point. Um, as we get going more, you may see uh, something settle in that way. But to start, they're going to be able to play both sides. Go ahead, Chair. Between, you know, putting in an offense and bringing along a young quarterback mm -hmm. and yet at the same time knowing that those same mistakes, if they happen in a game, could be incredibly costly. How do you manage that in training camp? Yeah, um, that's, that's a good question. It, the, the ability to um, test in practice for a quarterback, um, you know, a throw, a tight window throw, a throw maybe he wouldn't make in a game. Um, you have to put a little bit of faith and trust in the quarterback that – they're going to try some things in practice, and, and it's encouraged to, uh, with the understanding that maybe if that was a game, you might not make that throw. Now, the trust comes in is that if it really is a game, would you still make that throw? We don't know that, you know, until, the, until you actually get out there and play. But um, I think Will's got a pretty good grasp, and, and Mason and Malik as well, about – you know, when when it's appropriate to to be more risky and more aggressive than maybe you might be in a normal game on a first and 10 um, than you are in a seven on seven period in practice. And so um, there is an ex experimentation that they're allowed. There's some freedom there. Um, but we always coach it afterwards like that's that's good. I'm glad you decided to try that. Just understand that if this was, you know, first and 10 and in, in the first quarter of the first game, we're probably going to check this ball down. And and they they work through that's that's on them to work through. But we coach that part of it when they're in those in those positions our coaching staff here have awarded guys for off-season uh, mm -hmm. work do you recognize players for you know now or during the season or? uh we did not for the off-season part um you know it just wasn't we were more concerned about just trying to get everything off the ground and new strength staff and new coaching staff and all that um, there will be things in the season uh you know players of the game and players of the week and all that that will uh that will award um, there's some parking spots out there that that might be open um that are really close to the door that might be part of it but um yeah we, we will do those things when when the season rolls around we did not do any of that uh in the off season more focused on getting the our systems off the ground and kind of every phase of the building Brian, that, you talked about Brock, how there's been so many things on your plate for the last seven months or whatever it is one, just how excited are you to be to this day, to have a team here to start the season? And two, what was your message to them when you first met them? Um, our first actual first team meeting, official team meeting, is after this. Um, so that'll be the messaging when I get there. Um, but I'm, 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 you know, I get to certain points in, in the summer and you just you can't wait to get started again, you know, and it's – uh, it's always a, my favorite time of year is when training camp starts. You know, obviously there's there's optimism and things are good and it's exciting. Um, it's it's a fun time of year. I love training camp. It's one of my favorite parts of football. Um, so to be here and, and be the head coach of the Titans in, in my first year and my first training camp is, is pretty awesome. I'm not gonna lie to you. And uh, I'm excited to get going. And um, again, I just it's it's a it's a pretty cool moment for me to be able to to 
be up here talking about training camp. Um, and it won't always be this exciting and this optimistic, but it is right now, and I'm going to enjoy it. Just talked about how exciting he is just to start training camp. You guys have put in a lot of work over the last several months. What's the excitement level for you going Same. To- uh, ready to get it kicked off and get rolling, get back to what what this whole thing is about, which is football and seeing the guys on the field. And uh, like you said, um, you know, made a lot of changes um, on the team and a lot of new guys. And this will be the first time all those guys have been together. So excited to see that. With uh, Levis taking over and actually being a starter, et cetera, how do you feel he's done as far as stepping forward, whether it's the trip to Cabo, putting the other passing camps and things together? No, I think he was great. You know, just he's growing as a leader, um, you know, finding his voice. Uh, being empowered, you know, just in terms of what the coaches allow him to do and what he's been asked to do. Uh, my only drawback from this offseason with him is that I didn't get invited to Cabo. So uh, that was my only beef with, you know, with Will and what he's done this offseason. Are you done at safety with Adams or are you still looking at other safeties to bring in? I mean, we're looking at other people in, at all positions. We were just talking, you know, about bringing some guys in just to kick some tires and, you know, see where guys are. Um, you know, our roster isn't set. Obviously, we don't have to have the roster set till September. Uh, so we're always looking to improve at every position. Adam fits on this team, and maybe what role do you envision for him this year? Oh, he's definitely a fit. Um, obviously, it's the early part of his career. He was under Denard. Now, Denard wasn't the coordinator, uh, per se, but um, someone that he's very familiar with, as well as Steve Jackson and Frank Bush. And so uh, we have the opportunity to bring a guy in um, who's played at a very high level. Uh, in this league, and we feel that, you know, we keep him healthy and get him out there on the field. He can continue to make those plays. And, you know, a guy like Hook, having Hook, you know, still here gives us the versatility to bring guys in, whether it's a strong or a free, because Hook can play an interchangeable spot. How big a concern is that recent health history? I mean, it's always a concern. You know, that's one of the things when, you know, when we're talking about bringing guys in and A-Rob is, you know, and, and BG, all those guys we're talking, we're looking at the health. That's the main thing. There have been guys here that we've, brought in the sign and just couldn't get to that point where we felt comfortable with the health. Um, I think the way our deal is structured with him, you know, it's um, it's, a, it's a prove it deal for us and a prove it deal for him. Um, and I know Jamal, I know how he's intrinsically wired. He wants to prove to the world and to everybody that he can stay healthy and still play at a high level. Um, and it's our job, you know, as a training staff with Todd and Matt and Mike and those guys to make sure he's out there on the field as much as possible. How do you feel about the state of the pass rush right now? And how much can this defense maybe make up for any deficiencies there by blitz? Uh, I mean, it's, it's just like anything else when you're playing the game of football, um, especially the pass rush. If you don't have, you know, those fastballs off the edge, you got to find different ways to get there. Um, I know one thing about Denard, our defense is going to be aggressive. You know, whether we had Lawrence Taylor and Pat Swillen rushing opposite of each other, we're going to still be aggressive and come after people. Um, you know, but, you know, it is what it is. We still got to improve uh, the pass rush, whether that's on the edge, whether that's interior. Uh, however, we got the guys that we feel can cover people, you know, and so I think that'll help the rush as well. Um, but, again, just something that we're always looking to improve. I guess for both you and Anthony, I mean, are there other, you're talking about kicking tires on some players. Are there certain positions you want to see how things go in camp before deciding, hey, we need to go out and get this player at this position, that position? When is that, when is that day? How, how long do you give a position group a chance to – establish yourself before you look around maybe somewhere else yeah i think you know you're coming in and you feel good about the roster you've put together so far and i think as you go through camp and you evaluate and then you start making decisions from there if you want to you know maybe explore another position bring some guys in work them out but i think as you go through it training camp make those decisions as you go and i'll follow that up you know i've probably over the last week or two spoken to maybe two or three gms around the league just going through our rosters where you're heavy where you're light you know, there are going to be some teams and some guys that show up in the preseason. There are going to be some positions where we have, you know, where we're heavy. So it's not just in terms of signing free agents. You know, there are going to be trade opportunities. You know, as of right now, we're sitting at the seventh spot in the claim order, you know, plan on taking advantage of that, you know, being able to claim some guys that come free, you know, at some point. So, uh, like I said, we're always looking, and we're going to always do whatever we got to do to improve this team. Hey, what are your thoughts on, on- – Sweat and where he is and how he's progressed through the off season and your outlook for immediately with camp. Yeah, so you know I had a lot of conversations with Sweat this off season. You know he's uh, and it was more so about you know making sure that when he comes back his mind and his body's right. 
Because I think sometimes as a rookie, you come in and you don't realize how fast training camp comes. And then once it gets here, how long the season is. And, and just making sure that, you know, he was doing the right things this offseason to make sure he comes back in the, in the right mind space um, and also physically. And then also just having general conversations about him. You know, he was in Houston when the hurricane came through and just making sure his family and him was okay. Defensive line, aside from Jeff, even in, in years past, it's always been a group that's been deep and a group that's had a lot of, you know, guys who have experience like Danico. You don't have as much of that this year. How do you, what's your evaluation of some of these up-and-coming guys like McClendon and Bohanna that may be getting a, more of a shot this year? Yeah, I mean, they get their, they get their opportunity. You know, it's just like everything else. Like you said in the past, you know, you've had a bunch of great D linemen, but even those guys at some point were young and had to prove themselves and earn a spot. Um, and it's just the way the league rolls. You know, it's, it's, uh, I don't want to say this sounds bad, but like kind of out with the old and with the new. You know, these guys get their opportunity. And, you know, I know TK's up for the challenge. Uh, I know Big Q and uh, um, Coburn, like all those guys, and Marlon Davidson. These guys want opportunities, and they're going to have the opportunity to do so. I think all these guys grew uh, this offseason. Um, you know, it's been, it's been good to see them run, you know, going out there a little bit ago and seeing these guys move around. And you can tell it's a different group. I think even Jeff, like it doesn't get talked about as much, but like Jeff's leadership, you know, and the way he's like really, um, you know, it was always like Jeff was the leader of the D-line group. And then now you feel Jeff is not only the leader of the D-line group and the defense, but the whole team. And you feel it and you see it. And, you know, the way he goes is the way the group goes, just not in terms of on the field, but off the field as well and how he handles his business. And so he set a great example for those guys so they have something to follow. Brandon, do you feel like with the assistance that, um, you know, your defensive coordinator hired and, and obviously Brian looked at, there's so much trust put in a lot of them with just even some of the guys they have connections with that they're bringing them in that they will continue to develop them or maybe make them a better player where they couldn't get as much out of there. Like how much of that trust played into a part with those assistants? No, I mean, our assistant coaches, I, you guys have heard me talk about it. Like I'm, I'm excited to see these guys work and um, see these guys, you know, get on the grass. Like that's the exciting part. I believe these guys really coach ball. I've worked with a few of them. Some of them I uh, admired from afar. Uh, but these guys are a talented group of dudes who know how to coach ball and know how to maximize, you know, players' abilities. And, you know, it's not just me uh, hyping them up. You, you just look at their history and it says it, you know. So for using relationships to get those guys, like we talked about earlier with Jamal and, you know, players come in with trust in coaches, right? And that helps and it kind of – you know, alleviate some of the initial wall to get through that the coaches would normally have to. And it puts the players in a position to be the purveyors of the message, you know, for the coach. The coach, they know what the coach is expecting, and now they can come in the room and kind of let guys know whether it's, um, you know, a young guy getting ripped by a coach and not knowing how to respond and, you know, having the vet who's been with the coach, you know, giving them a little pro tip on how to deal with it and handle that. Like, that helps us. And that allows, you know, not only our room, our position room, but the whole team to grow. Brand, there was a, a lot of discussion just around where Traylon stood with you guys during during the off season, dur during the spring, and just with the guys you guys brought in, like Tyler and uh, Calvin and, and whatnot. Just how have you seen him maybe handle all that to this point, and and just just kind of his approach up to this point? I think Traylon's really grown up. You know, um, he uh, sent us a picture. You know, uh, of uh, during the off season, this little break here, you know, showing his new physique. You know, he came in and uh, um, he really took the, took to heart. You know, the conversation that he had with myself and uh, with Coach Cali, um, and he's completely bought in. I've you know messaged with him, you know, throughout the off season, and uh, I think he's in a really good spot. Um, and you know, again, we added Tyler and we added um, Calvin. Obviously, D-Hop was here, but you have, but for a young guy like that, he still, he has vets that he can learn from, you know, and again with him and his size and his speed and his explosiveness, and now, you know, he can be an X, he can be a Z. You know, Tyler's primary spot is probably going to be the F, you know what I mean? So um, I'm, I'm expecting, you know, things from him and just his unselfishness. I know it was some talk about him taking gunner reps, and but that was because he wanted to, and he wants to prove that he can stay healthy and play top-level football. You've been very patient, I guess, with Caleb Farley. I guess you feel like he's in a position to compete for a spot on this roster, and what's your message to him as he, as he tries to stick? It's like you said, man, just, you know, be out there as much as you can. 
obviously, you know, in order to make this team, you have to be healthy and you have to be there. Uh, really encouraged uh, by Caleb and his just his commitment to to the process. Right, he's had every reason, whether it's on the field, or off the field, to step away and take breaks. But he's dealt with the ton of adversity. He's taken a head on. And every day he shows up to work ready to go. So you can't do anything but respect that and admire that. But just like everybody else on the team, he's going to have to stay healthy and show that he earned a spot on this team. And AJ Smith, Sam Somerville, long list of acquisitions and promotions. Can you maybe speak to the changes that have taken place? this offseason under you and your staff and maybe how that helps the team? Yeah, I think it's just like the Rosh and I let A-Rob go into it a little bit more, but um, just like how we treat the players, we're always looking to improve, you know, our personnel department and get talented people in here, um, you know, that's going to help us grow and help us identify players. You know, obviously, you know, we all sit and talk and look at the first round picks, you know, so you're not unearthing any anyone there. Those guys kind of stand out. But, you know, for us and for most teams and the teams that I've been a part of, um, you know, hitting on the draft is you have to do that. But then being able to find those undrafted guys, you know, that allow you to, you know, steal depth, you know, on the back end helps you as well. And those it's not me that's out there, you know, scouring the country looking for those for those guys it's the people you mentioned the AJ's the Sam's um, the Keenan Agnews the you know Kalen Reese it's those guys that are out there doing it so we need as much top level talent there as well Brian just talked about hold on let, let A-Rob go into a little bit more about those guys and their background and so what yeah, they're going to do we're excited about AJ um, Sam and you know Keenan you know uh, AJ's got a unique background because he's in his nine years in the business he's had five in pro and four in college just recently fo- college with the uh, Buffalo Bills. Um, so he'll work with, you know, Brian Gardner, John Salgi, all those guys will work together, um, you know, in that department. And then adding Sam, who's, you know, who's with the Bears for the last 12 years, mainly in college, he's done the Southeast. And his recent role there was national. He would continue that same role with us here. Um, and then Keenan Agnew, <laughs> he was actually in camp with us last year as a, a mini camp trial guy. And then this past uh, year, he was volunteering in Detroit so we got an opportunity to hire him, you know, once we finish up the draft. So we're excited about all those guys and adding them. Are there built-in redundancies there, Ray? And you've got a director of scouting, you've got a director of college scouting, if I'm not mistaken, you've got a director of pro scouting. Seems like there's a lot of overlap. No, uh, I wouldn't say redundancy is the right word. I'd say it is, uh, it's us getting another good player. It's like having five good receivers. You know, there's nothing wrong with having five good receivers. We're not the only team in the league that has that structure of having a director of scouting and a director of pro and a director of college. Um, it just allows us to get another talented person in here. Like A-Rob said, uh, you know, A.J. has a pro background. He has a college background. So he can offer unique experiences where, you know, Brian's background has been primarily pro. John's has been primarily you know, college, even though he has some early pro experience. Um, and so, you know, A.J. will be used in a wide range of roles, but just allows us to add another, you know, talented guy. Brian just talked about how he's excited about launching the competition at the two spots on the right side of the offensive line. When you have those position battles in camp, how involved are you guys in that? Like, you know, did you shop for the groceries and now it's all up on them? Or are you involved in the conversations of who you think should be there? I've been joking uh, with Cali these last couple of days and, um, you know, telling him that it's his time now, you know. Um, but in all, in all fairness, I think it's, it's going to be good. We're going to be involved. Uh, we just met with the, uh, with the offensive staff yesterday, you know, going through how we're going to chart practice, how we're going to grade practice, and how our staff can be a part of that in terms of inputting the data and us being all on the same page and how we're talking about these guys and seeing these guys. And so um, it's going to be, a, you know, an evolving process, you know, for us. And, you know, like – I won't. I'll speak for me and A. Rob when I say we're not coaching anybody. We're not implementing any scheme. You know, I'm not going to go and tell Jerron Christian. You know, he needs to fit his hands better. You know, or, or have better hat placement on outside zone. You know, however, we know what the traits are, what we're looking for, and what's going to need to you know make our system go. And so we'll be you know, involved on a daily basis of how we're evaluating and seeing these guys so we can pick, you know, the, not only the best five, 
um, to go out there, you know, uh, week one, um, but also those top backups because, as we know, you know, guys get banged up all the time, and we need to not miss a step when we put backups in. We did so, so much about final say earlier in the year. Can you just kind of talk us through what the process will be next month with you and Brian when it comes time to turn the Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, I hate to – I've gotten off the word. I know it's the the buzzword, but it's going to be a, a collaborative thing, you know, and it's not going to be one of those uh, pissing matches, you know, if you will. Um, everybody that we have brought here, we brought here together. Um, and, you know, there are going to be some decisions, whether this month, next month, a year from now, where, you know, we're not going to be on the same page. But then that's where it becomes a collective. You know, we have uh, it's not just Brian and myself. We have other people that are involved in the process who, you know, have a, um, you know, a vested interest in it. And so we're going to have all of us involved, but I know ultimately it comes down to Brian and I. And so whatever decision that's made is going to be made in the best interest of the team and not a, a power thing between Brian and I. In regards to that, how do you feel like you and your staff have done? Because this was a, a different style of team, especially on offense under Mike. And now with Brian here, you've opened things up, gonna, you know, more wide receiver heavy, things like that. How do you feel like all around that you and your staff have done in assembling pieces to help Brian and his staff do what they want to accomplish? Well, I mean, that's, that's our job, you know what I mean? No matter how you look at it, um, you know, kind of going back to like what Nick was saying, just in terms of final say, like whether whoever has final say, like our role in personnel, we're in the service business. We're here to provide a service for the coaches and be able to identify players that give them an opportunity to be the best coaches and implement their systems. Um, so for us, uh, like I, like we talked about a couple months ago, the big thing was being able to get the coaching staff in fresh, get our co get our scouts in. Um, and we all got on the same accord, you know, immediately just in terms of what it looks like to play in those systems on offense, defense, and special teams, and the coaches being able to clearly, you know, give us those instructions on what it looks like. And so we spent a lot of time working on it um, as a group. And then A-Rob and Salgi and the guys put together a scout school for the uh, scouts, you know, to go through every position um, and what it looks like. And, um, you know, so for us, we have the clear instruction. We know what it looks like, and now we can go out and effectively do our job. Stoney, Stoney started with no designation. I guess your hope that he can work himself back into a position where he can punt for you in week one? Yeah, um, and I think, uh, you know, and shouts out to Stoney. He's probably spent more time in this building than anybody, you know, this offseason. He was legitimately seven days a week. You come in on a Sunday not expecting to see someone and you see Stoney walking through because he's getting treatment or he's doing things. So it was important for him to be back. And, um, you know, the, the work he's put in, he's been punting on his own. He's been kicking the ball, you know, really well. So the next step in his rehab process is, you know, being able to feel some pressure. You know, obviously you're not hitting him or touching him in practice, but that's the mental part that he has to uh, take next. And if he's on PUP, he can't get that, you know. And so it was important for us to be able to, you know, put him out there so he can start to get the feel of the game. And it's the natural, you know, uh, next step in his recovery. And um, what went into his son, what you guys like about him and kind of could he even, you know, be in the, in the mix as far as the right tackle is concerned? Yeah, he's versatile. You know, he's played both tackle spots. He's played guard spots. And a lot of it was on a whim, you know, him coming in as a backup and being forced out there. And he's played pretty well. Um, it kind of goes back to the question we I was asked earlier about um, coaching and, you know, the relationships he's played under, you know, under big coach before. And so, again, you have a guy. Our room is relatively young you know, in there. So now you have a purveyor of the message. You know, he's kind of one of the elder statesmen, if you will, in the room. And he knows what it takes to play and to work every day under Bill Callahan. So he'll be able to carry that message. But he's a guy that, you know, in the, in the grand scheme of things, we've got two spots that are, you know, going to be competitive. And everybody on this roster is going to have a chance to earn those spots. So as long as he stays healthy and he's out there on the field, he has a chance to start. And as you begin to, like, as you start the year, any thought on DeAndre Hopkins and extending him? Like, have you talked to Kelton and those guys about about that at all? We uh, we've identified a number of guys that you know we'd like to continue to move forward with. 
you know, and eventually take care. Um, but you guys have heard me, you know, we're going to keep family business in, you know, in terms of talking about their contracts and what's next for them. Um, but we as a staff, we have identified some guys that, you know, we'd like to have here, you know, long term. Is DeAndre one of them? He's one of the guys that's on our team, and uh, <laughs> and we've talked about a number of guys on the team uh, to have those conversations. You know, one thing I appreciate about D Hop is um, if you guys have gotten to know him, D Hop is straightforward, and uh, you know, and D Hop and I we can have some straightforward conversations, and we have and we do, um, and so D Hop knows how we feel about him. You know, and I think that's a that's a big thing, especially for a veteran, you know, at this stage in his career. And I think the way he's shown up here, the way he's bought into a new staff kind of shows how he feels about us and what we have going. Guys, good. Uh, one, one quick. Uh, did you get when you were down in Mobile? Uh, did you get to uh, interact with Kyrie Jackson at all? And, and if so, like, what, what are your thoughts on you know the tragedy? Yeah. So we you know how we do the interviews at night with a lot of the players. He was one of the guys that came through that and. You know, interaction with him was he was a good kid. You know, he had a good interview with us. Um, you know, sad what happened. Very, very sad what happened. Heart goes out to his family, you know, to the Vikings organization. Um, but our interactions with him at the, at the Senior Bowl, he, it was good. Steve, you have set a huge task this offseason to, one, upgrade the talent on the roster, but, two, fit personnel to new schemes in all three phases. After going through that process in seven months, as you start training camp, how close did you get to maybe the dream board that you would have had up seven months ago? I don't know that you ever hit the dream board, you know. Um, and we talked about it. There were a couple guys that we targeted during the free agency process that we didn't get, but it allowed us to, you know, move in a different direction and get someone else that we didn't anticipate being able to get. Um, I never went into it with a – you know, let me get all these guys. It was just about mixing and matching the best pieces, right? And just understanding how many draft picks that we had and knowing where we had to get to for that. But then being able to take advantage of where we were from a cap space, you know, to get as many good guys as possible. I feel really good about the work that we did um, and the guys that we've acquired because I think they fit us and what and who we are and what we're going to be. So I feel really good about that. Um, but as you know, the process isn't over. You know, we got to set the roster, you know, here in September. But like I said, we're sitting there with the seventh spot in the claiming order for a few weeks into the season. So we're going to, you know, keep turning it and keep working until we get the right mix. Were you offered a fourth that could have turned into a third for Derek? <laughs> no, I wasn't. Uh, I don't know where that came from. That's not my concern. Um, but we had multiple teams, you know, to call about Derek and um, offer something that wasn't worth taking. Oh, worth even considering, and I communicated that with Derek during that time. Um, but no, we never agreed with anybody to do anything to move anybody. Thanks. Thank you.